gray wolves are an essential part of the northern wilderness. As the largest natural canids left on Earth, these apex predators are at the top of the food chain, right up alongside bears. All animals in the Northwoods respect and fear wolves. The scientific name of the gray wolf is Canis lupus. They're the ancestors of all domesticated dog breeds, meaning even golden retrievers are closely related to gray wolves. Gray wolves are the largest subspecies of wild canid alive today, with the heaviest specimens tipping the scales at over 175 pounds. These great beasts travel and hunt in packs, usually consisting of six to eight members. However, a single pack can have as many as 20 wolves. They efficiently work together to take down huge prey, such as elk, moose, and even bison. Additionally, they can reach a top speed of 35 to 40 miles per hour for short bursts. They can travel at slower speeds for extremely long distances. They normally trot at about 5 miles per hour for 10 to 30 miles every single day in search of prey. Imagine running a marathon being a part of your typical day. Some sources claim that gray wolves can bite with a force of up to 1,500 pounds per square inch. They have the strongest jaws of all canid species and can even crush bones with their teeth to access the nutritious marrow inside. Large bones require a tremendous amount of force to be crushed. However, the gray wolf's tough molars combined with the strength of its jaw muscles can turn dense bones into mush. Bones and bone marrow are both very important to the diet of a gray wolf. This is part of the reason why the gray wolf has evolved to have such a powerful bite force. To avoid getting injured, gray wolves usually target smaller or weakened prey because even the most minor of injuries can spell death for an animal in the wild. They aren't picky eaters either and will gladly help themselves to carrion, even if it belongs to a bear. A pack of gray wolves may harass and sometimes even attack a full-grown grizzly bear to steal its lunch. Gray wolves are quite adaptable and can be found throughout much of the world's boreal forests and even portions of the tundra. The historic range of gray wolves in North America was massive compared to their range today. Currently, these elusive predators can be found throughout much of Alaska, Canada, and a few portions of the lower 48 that I talk about in a separate video I created on this channel last fall. I actually dive deeper into every aspect of gray wolves in that video than I do in this one, so I recommend you add that video to your watch list. The gray wolves found in my state, Michigan, are often called Eastern Timber Wolves, and they reside in the Northern Great Lakes region of North America. This is one of the few regions in the entire Lower 48 where relatively healthy populations of gray wolves still exist. Although I've never seen a wild wolf outside of Yellowstone National Park, I have heard wild wolves howling when I was camping all on my own in northeastern Minnesota. It was a magical sound that I can never forget. The idea that wolves howl only during a full moon is a myth. One of the reasons it is believed that wolves howl is to communicate with other wolves over long distances. Howling is an effective way for pack members to locate each other in the vast wilderness. A wolf pack's territory can span hundreds of miles. A pack will defend their territory from rival packs and other encroaching predators such as coyotes, mountain lions, black bears, and brown bears. Many hierarchical rules exist within a wolf pack, such as low-ranking members not being allowed to eat before high-ranking members. An entire social dynamic is at play. The big bad wolf can also be affectionate and eloquently expressive. Wolves are immensely social animals, capable of displaying a wide range of emotions. Just like us, they play games, cuddle, and share food with each other. Wolves lovingly teach their young how to hunt and often engage in physical play sessions with them. Wolf puppies are not born with a thick double coat and must instead rely on the warmth of their mothers and siblings in a cozy den. Gray wolves will either excavate the ground to make dens or use abandoned ones. The pup's father will defend the shelter against threats, such as rival males, and bring meat to the mother. At this stage of her life, the mother will spend most of her time tending to the pups. Mother wolves are ferociously protective of their puppies. To express their discontent, they will snarl savagely, curling their lips to reveal a set of powerful teeth. Each member of a wolf pack typically assists in raising pups in one way or another. Pups require milk from their mother for the first six to 10 weeks of their lives. Once they are weaned, their parents and occasionally other pack members will start offering them regurgitated meat. As gross as it sounds to us humans, this is how baby food is made in nature. Numerous bird species are known to do this as well for their young. Gray wolves have large paws which prevent them from sinking into fluffy snow when they're traveling or chasing prey. Scent glands between their toes release distinct pheromones. By smelling these pheromones left on the ground, 
gray wolves can tell exactly which wolf left tracks in the wilderness. By the way, why are they called gray wolves? Gray wolves are not always gray. They can be gray, black, white, brown, or a combination of these colors. A gray wolf's thick double coat of fur keeps it warm and protected from the harsh elements of the north. All modern wolf species have been hunted excessively by humans for their beautiful hides in the past. In fact, by the 1920s, gray wolves were completely eradicated in Yellowstone National Park. This caused drastic changes throughout the greater Yellowstone ecosystem. By the early 1990s, the consequences of erasing a keystone species from a sensitive ecosystem were clearly visible. The land had been heavily overgrazed by the herbivores, and the elk population exploded. At that point, many people were demanding for gray wolves to be brought back to Yellowstone so that herbivore populations could be controlled in a natural way to balance the ecosystem. In 1995 and 1996, a team of biologists captured 31 gray wolves from the Canadian wilderness and northern Montana and released them into Yellowstone National Park. Within just a few years, the wolves reduced herbivore populations to such an extent that it transformed the entire park. The presence of wolves affected the behavior and populations of nearly every species in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, especially Yellowstone's herbivorous ungulates. Species such as bison and elk were now on the move. A herd of elk would no longer stick around one valley and graze a bear. They would be moving on to the next valley and the next meadow, constantly migrating throughout the park, allowing for the plant communities to heal, recover, and grow in a natural way. This created habitats for so many other species. More vegetation means more shelter and more forage options for birds, rodents, rabbits, beavers, insects, and every other living life form in this ecosystem. The presence of wolves affected the behavior and populations of nearly every species in the greater Yellowstone ecosystem, which is now one of the most functional ecosystems of its size left on our planet. It is one of the last slices of the American Serengeti. All thanks to the reintroduction of gray wolves. If you enjoyed this video and learned a lot of new things about this remarkable species, consider purchasing a copy of my book, Iconic Animals of the North. You can start reading the sample for free by clicking on the Amazon link in the description of this video. This book took me over half a year to write, and it is a nonfiction book about 23 species of the boreal forest biome. My name is Sadat. I'm a master's in biology student with dreams of becoming a full-time creator on YouTube. I want to continue creating educational videos on wildlife and ecosystems, so subscribe to my channel for my next upload. Let me know how I did in this video in the comments section down below. And if you haven't already, please give this video a like. Alright guys, until next time, and remember, keep it wild.